Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP. And um, I don't know what I'm going to name this video, but it's going to be about my image and how if I can mimic FE, how Enneagram 4 is about identity, but Enneagram 6, which I am, I'm an Enneagram 6, is different. Uh, so what happened this week is that uh, on Thursday I um, I had a gigantic breakdown. Um, I've started antidepressants. It's been two weeks. It sucks. And um, in the morning I thought it was a good day. I was feeling good. Um, later on I figured I found out that I was on my period, but I didn't know that then. And. Um, I went to see the doctor. The doctor um, told me to continue with the antidepressants, to not give up. Um, because I told her that I wasn't sleeping because of them. I have these bad side effects. And um, she told me to keep going, but to keep um, slowly upping my workload, but not too fast, because these things take time. So then I went to work. And I had these calls um, to make to patients, and that went fine. Then we had the doctor's meeting that we have once a week. And as usual, this is very usual, uh, there was a lot of um, people with very different opinions. Um, the doctors at my workplace are very different from each other. Some of them are really loud and extroverted, and some of them are really introverted. And... Um, all of the MBTI spectrum is in there, you know? And um, uh, we're talking about the emergencies, and the emergencies are not going well. And so we're trying to find another organization uh, for that. Uh, but some, some of these doctors are really immature, and some um, are kind of don't respect their colleagues so then it starts becoming a problem uh, my uh, fellow resident uh, tried to say one of the problems that was there and then some of the older doctors were like yeah but you, you, this is good for your learning experience and then it was like this is kind of something that i wanted to leave behind in france that mentality that just because i suffered you should suffer too. I don't like that. And so I I also contributed and asked for a very small a very small favor. I wanted this computer station to stay at the place where it used to be. So for some reason this computer has been moved away. I'm not like asking for the whole place to be reorganized. I'm just asking for the computer cable the screen and cable that was there to remain where it's at, where it is at this spot because that would actually help my job a lot and it was like i i was dismissed and like it was like i was being a problem and i i felt really mad about that um but i i didn't feel anything at the time because you know how antidepressants dull your whole presence so I wasn't feeling anything. I was just feeling some like mildly uncomfortable. And so when I left the meeting, that's when it all came out. I just started crying. And I was supposed to have my meeting with my supervisor, but my supervisor saw me crying. And so we spent the hour, instead of talking about patient cases, we just talked about like how I was feeling and like what was frustrating me and stuff. And then um, I, I kind of composed myself, but then at the end there, I, I started crying again. And then she said, Ingrid, you need to go home. And I was like, no, I don't want to go home. I think I, like, I'll manage. It'll go well. And then she was like, no, Ingrid, this isn't going to go well. And then I started crying again, which didn't help my case, obviously. And she said, no, now, now you leave. You turn your computer off. I tell the secretaries that you're going to leave. We are leaving. 
And I was like, okay. You know, she, she kind of like sent me home. And I didn't like that, you know. Then I got mad at her, you know, because I was like, oh, I don't want to be sent home like this. It's kind of, you know, like being um, an unruly child or whatever, you know. <laughs> so I was sent home. And uh, on the way, obviously, there's long corridor where there are patients sitting in the waiting room. They see me crying. Uh, uh, the nursing assistant sees me crying. The secretary sees me crying. My boss sees me crying. And he gives me like kind of a Voldemort hug, you know? Like the hug that is like super awkward that I wish did not exist. Um, but yeah, he, he said, yeah, go home. So I, I'm glad I have a very understanding boss. Um, but yeah, so I went home and then I cried for two, three more hours. Uh, so I cried like nonstop from 11 to like two or three in the afternoon. And I actually had to take the other half of the Xanax that my colleague had given me. So I was feeling like shit. And then I found out it was my period, but I didn't know that. I came back to work the next day and also I did some driving. So that, that was actually a good distraction to do some uh, driving with uh, a positive person and distract myself. Um, but then I had to up the dosage of the medication. So that wasn't good either. But I, I did manage on Friday. But then, so what happens is that you come back to work and everybody knows that you were crying your eyes out like you were in a, like a monster the day before. So that, uh, that makes the situation very odd. Okay. Um, I mean, that has happened before that people have seen me crying. Not that I'm at this workplace, but at other places. Uh, usually it's a close colleague of mine uh, or like a close friend or that kind of thing. But now it was like everybody who saw me crying was not like super close to me. And also they told all their colleagues about it. And I, I've kind of become the martyr of this workplace. Okay, this is kind of like, I've become a symbol of something, which is very strange to me, but it is, it, it kind of feels like that way. And it's like, as an FI user, I have zero idea how people actually see me. It's, uh, it's, it's difficult for me to like put myself in an outsider's person's shoes and see what my image actually looks like to somebody on the outside. I know what maybe... Like, maybe I might be trying to project something, but I know that that's not, like, how I'm perceived, actually. Um, but, so, I don't want to be the victim. I don't want people to pity me. Uh, I want people to see me as capable, and I want me to people to see me as friendly. Um, but... It's not that important that they see me as that, but I'd rather not become like a, a, a like a, I don't want to be dehumanized. I want to be seen as, as just a, a person like they all are, you know? And so I've become something else and it's a little bit strange. And I mean, it's not all positive. It's very negative in certain senses, but there is a positive in there. And it is that I am inspiring change. Sometimes groups of people need to simplify people into like archetypes or symbols or something like that. They, ne they need that in order for the team to work. Like, and this is something I think Effie understands and and sees in, in groups of people. But I'm not used to seeing people in that way because I'm seeing each individual always, you know? I'm not seeing like the general gist of what is going on in the in the group. 
But here I'm seeing that. And I'm seeing that there that a lot of these uh, nursing assistants are very motherly towards me. They've always been because they are the same age as my mother, basically. And they they see me as a young, um, like, inexperienced doctor and they want to help. And you have to play sometimes a part in order to, like, survive them. As a girl, a lot of the ways to get things is a lot of acting kind of dumb, kind of... I mean, I don't want to, to do that, but in a way, like, being cute has its advantages. <laughs> Um, because people do have biases. People uh, see me as a as a sweet girl, okay? Um, obviously, discrimination plays in. Um, so, I mean, if I were dark-skinned, um, uh, people weren't, wouldn't be as friendly to me. Um, racism exists, you know? There are, there are these biases around. And so, I will use my privileges to my advantage if uh if that's the only way of of getting um of going you know and in this case i don't really have a choice because i want to be able to stay at this workplace and it's not totally bad i don't know if i can explain this very well it's just so i've become kind of an inspiration for people because they've seen me struggling um, and they recognize themselves in that struggle or they recognize a family member in that struggle. Uh, they aren't INFPs so they, um, they maybe don't dwell in these kinds of struggles uh, and are more geared towards practical stuff or thinking about the external world and stuff. Um, but I think that workplaces, or like places, just communities, that have an NF there, suddenly it changes the whole vibe of the place. Um, a, a workplace that does not have any NF, there will be something missing. Um, because all types have something to give to the table. Even in like the harshest work environments, um, you need to have that ethical person there, the person who cares about humanity, that cares about the big picture. Um, the sensitive person can be an asset uh, in in like an organization. Um, it kind of keeps the morale up somehow, or it's not like we're INFPs aren't cheerleaders. I mean, ENFPs can be cheerleaders, or ESFPs, uh, or you know, there, there are better people to be cheerleaders, extra types. But we bring this spark of magic or something. The the we bring a flavor or something that. If we weren't there, the place would sorely lack. And I think that other people see that in us. I've talked about this before, about how like people do see us as friendly. Um, and they want to help us. Um, and it's hard to, to, to do this in a balanced way without becoming like a symbol, like a martyr or infantilized or um seen as the i mean there, there are all sorts of roles that you can take on um and it's not like i chose to take on this role it's just i kind of by default became that role uh, because uh, my workplace is mostly sjs and i'm uh, an infp i don't know if there are other nfs at my workplace the other INFP that was there, he left, and that made people really sad. So I think that we do have a lot to bring. And so that's what made me think of the Enneagram. How a lot of INFPs are Enneagram 4s. 
and I'm an Enneagram 6, but I do have four in my tri-type. And so a lot of it is about identity and uh, wanting to feel unique, wanting the attention kind of that brings, the misunderstoodness. We, we, we don't, we have a lot of shame um, as sensitive people and um, seeing people understand who we are is, is validating and that is what INFP fours look for. Um, and I think that they have more the tendency towards falling into martyrdom. I think that twos, in a certain way, all of the image, the hard types, uh, the two, three, four, but twos fall into like martyrdom in that they're, oh, they're, they're always giving them themselves, they're always too nice, you know? Fours go into this kind of martyrdom that like they they feel victimized because they're unique, you know, and their uniqueness is not valued, and all of that. Um, so I I understand that struggle because I I thought that was an enneagram four, but I think that I really am an enneagram six, because to me, I don't really care that much about the fact that my image is not what I wanted it to be, or like, it's not really like I, it's not my primary focus. The primary focus is that I want the stable community that my workplace gives me. And I don't want to lose that because I then I lose my uh, safety net. And so I will become whatever the group wants me to become if that will guarantee me the safety of the place. Um, so it doesn't upset me that much, but it is kind of a strange thing that happened. And I don't think it would have been mystified me that much if I actually was a FE user. Um, it's just, it's, it's not the sort of thing that I'm used to um, having to deal with. You know, I'm, in my ideal world, I would just be invisible, but unfortunately I exist and uh, I do affect people around me. I do have an impact on people around me, even though I didn't actively try to have an impact because I don't have SE, I don't have a lot of TE either. I didn't actively try to have an impact, but I do have an impact. And so I have to, I want to make sure that the consequences of my actions are positive for me and for other, other people. So I realized like, okay, I can use this pain that I have unfortunately had to show to other people because I cried in public. I can use this as a way to inspire my workplace to, to change the system. I hope that I'm successful. Uh, so a way to change the system. Um, people identify themselves in me or they identify somebody that they love in me and they are willing to help me. Um, and so in that way, I can have that security that I obsess over, <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't need to be afraid of showing myself because showing myself is is actually the thing that inspires others. It's not something that freaks out others to the same extent that it inspires people to actually think of like the consequences of, for example, overwork. It's making my boss think a lot of beatings have been set into action because of me. Like, I didn't... Like, obviously there are other factors that came into play. But how come it came... How come so much started happening? Suddenly, like, I flipped... Like, I think that NI works like this. Like, suddenly I flipped some switch 
and then like a whole you know the marble just triggers a lot of other marbles so I started a spark of something um, you know, I didn't start to fire, but uh, I kind of did, uh, for some reason. And I'm going to try to be positive about that and use it to my advantage, use it to the workplace's advantage, use it for everybody's positive. Okay. I'm going to you can kind of flip the situation. It's not that I'm being pitied and oh, life is terrible and I'm crying because of that and life sucks and I'm a martyr. What, why did I didn't, I never asked to be. You can flip that and think like, oh, I, I actually, by being myself, I inspired people to seek change, to implement the changes that they've always thought. Uh, it has made people think, made people feel stuff, and it has inspired them. And so I think that that is something that, like, that's the power that INFPs have. Um, people don't like seeing us suffer. Um, they, I mean, they, they might, maybe, in the moment, but uh, those aren't people that we want to uh, be associated with. But I think that we have a greater power than we think. Um, if there are people that like us, they will really do their best to make sure that you're happy. And they will, like, if they see you sad, it's like, 10 times worse than if they see somebody else sad for some reason because a lot of people find us like cute or whatever and so even though I felt like nobody was listening to me the next day uh, my boss apologized to me for um, uh, not taking my idea like seriously and he said that uh, it was good that I spoke during the meeting. Um, a nursing assistant came to me and said, uh, oh, that's good that you um, said what you thought uh, against these older doctors who uh, they've tried saying things for years and nothing ever happened. Well, when I say something, um, by the fact that I'm a young doctor, I could actually change things um, due to the social status, I guess. But also because of the fact that um, uh, they see the sensitivity there and they appreciate it. So this was kind of a complicated topic and I, I'm not sure I explained myself very well here. Um, but maybe, maybe some of you will get the gist of what I meant. Um, I am doing better now. Um, compared to on Thursday, where I cried for three hours in a row. Um, I think that the antidepressants are slowly, it's slowly going in the right direction. So I'm, I'm holding on hope, okay? Um, I want to thank everybody for the last, um, for the support on all the videos. And um, um, like and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.